Hi students, welcome to exercise 14b, double angle identities. So first let's start with uh, this expression here. Um, sine alpha plus beta um, equals sine A cos B plus cos A cos B, or alpha beta. Um, so this is a formula you learned in 14a. Um, it's just an identity. If you add the two angles together, this is how you would calculate this using exact values. Well, what happens if both alpha and beta are the same angle? Okay, so let's, let's say that alpha is equal to beta, which let's make it one variable, let's make it theta. Okay, so let's make them both theta. So, according to this now, if I replaced theta for both of those, this is what I would get. I would get sine of theta plus theta equals to sine theta cos theta plus cos theta sine theta. And if you look closely, this cos theta times sine theta is the same on both. So technically, this would give us 2 times sine theta cos theta. And that is the properties of what double angle identities are, is if these two angles were the same and you were add them together, you could produce a new formula for these uh, from the sum formulas. So this is the first one we're going to learn. Notice it's the same as this one. Sine of 2 theta. So if you add the 2 thetas together, you get 2 theta. You get 2 sine theta cos theta. I could do the same thing for the cos and tan functions. And these are, this is what we get out of it. Notice that there's three different ones for cos 2 theta. Um, the reason for that is um, all you got to do is replace cos 2 theta. So I'll do it for one of them. I won't do it for both. Okay, so let's say I have this, which is what you would get with the cos 2 theta. Let's say I replace cos squared theta by 1 minus sine theta squared minus sine theta squared. Okay, so th the way I replace this, if you remember uh, from the first trig identity we've done, we said cos squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. Therefore, I can replace cos squared theta with 1 minus sine squared theta. And that's where I got that from. So I replaced cos squared theta with 1 minus sine theta. And I simplify this to saying 1 minus 2 sine squared theta, which is how you would get this one. And I could do the same thing for sine squared. It would give me this one. So these are just products of that formula. And then there's also tan of 2 theta. Okay, so these are the double angle identities. These are also on your formula sheet. <clears throat> so, for example, one, simplify the following expression and give its exact value. Well, if you notice carefully, notice that, whoops, wrong button, notice that 1 minus 2 sine squared is also here. So this is the same expression as this, and all I've done is I said theta is equal to pi over 8, which means this formula is equivalent to this one. So this would be equal to cos of 2 times pi over 8, which is the angle theta that I've used in this formula. Well, if you multiply 2 times pi over 8, notice that you get cos of pi over 4. And we know the value of cos of pi over 4. It's square root of 2 over 2. Okay, so basically what this lesson is all about is how to use these formulas in different situations. Okay. If the angle, if the angle is between in the first quadrants, okay, so this means first quadrant because you're in between zero, so this is quadrant number one, okay, between zero and pi over two. So if we're in quadrant one and sine theta is equal to three fifths, determine the exact value of sine two theta. Well, from the formulas we were given on the other page, sine two theta is equal to two sine theta cos theta. Okay, well, I already know the value of sine theta. It's over here. I still need to find the value of cos theta. Okay, so now that goes back to what we learned in uh, exercise, I think, 10. Um, and to find the cos value, right, so I'll just kind of place it. We're in the first quadrant, right, so we have this triangle. Sine is 3 over 5, so opposite over hypotenuse. We don't know the value of x. So a quick calculation is 5 squared minus 3 squared equals to x squared. You have 16 equals to x squared. Therefore, you have plus or minus 4 equals to x. And because we are in the first quadrant, 
x is positive, therefore cos theta is equal to positive 4 over 5. All right, so I have sine theta over here. I now have cos theta, which is over here. Therefore, sine of 2 theta is going to be equal to 2 times sine theta times cos theta. And a quick multiplication gives us 2 times 3 is 6 times 4 is 24 over 5 times 5, which is 25. That's the value of sine 2 theta. Okay, tan of 2 theta, there's more than one way to do this. We could use the formula, but note that tan of 2 theta, um, hmm, uh, I don't know which one's the best way to start. You know what, let's, let's do the formula, which would be um, 2 tan theta, 1 minus tan squared theta. So what I still need to find, obviously, is the value of tan theta, um, because that's the value I have in my formula. Well, we know that tan theta is going to be equal to, if you look back to here, opposite over adjacent, or y over x, which in our case would be equal to 3 over 4. Okay, so now, using the formula, we're going to have tan 2 theta is equal to 2 times 3 quarters divided by 1 minus 3 quarters squared, right? Because this is tan squared theta. Okay, a little bit more calculations. So we have 6 quarters on the numerator, so 2 times 3 quarters, and 1 minus 9 sixteenths. A little bit of simplification is 6 quarters divided by 7 sixteenths. Okay, so move that over just to do some of the calculation. Uh, so this is equal to 6 quarters times, we remember when you flip the fraction, uh, so times 16 sevenths. So change the division to multiplication, flip the fraction. Uh, we've got a little bit of simplification we can do. We can divide that by 4. We can divide that by 4. And our total is going to be 24 sevenths. Okay, second example, or third in this case, I guess, second on this page. If cos theta equals to negative one quarter, and we are in the third quadrant, so this is telling us quadrant three, right, quadrant three, because it's between pi and three pi over two. Determine the exact value of, of cos two theta and secant two theta. Okay, well, cos two theta, we can actually calculate that pretty easily because we have a given value of cos and if you look at your different options there are three different ones there's one that only involves cos theta it would be 2 cos squared theta minus 1 so notice that I already have the value for cos theta it's negative a quarter so I can simply say cos 2 theta is equal to 2 times negative 1 quarter squared minus 1 you square that, you get 1 16th positive, right, because we squared a negative, and you get 2 16th minus 1, which would be the negative 14 sixteenths, and we'll simplify that to negative 7 eighths. Okay, so here, secant of 2 theta, um, well, that's as simple as saying, well, I know that the value of secant is the reciprocal of cos 2 theta. So therefore, all I have to do is flip this guy. If you guys remember, when we took values of secants and cos, so all we have is negative 8 sevenths. So secant 2 theta is equal to negative 8 sevenths, which is just the reciprocal of that fraction. All right, last example. Uh, we're going to start tying this into identities, if you remember from exercise 13. So we can simplify expressions using these identities. So let's say we're, we're giving this expression. Um, we're going to play around a little bit with it. So in A, determine the non-permissible values for this expression. And if you remember, the non-permissible values are any time you divide by 0. Well, cos 2 theta in the numerator, nothing will divide by 0 there, because this is just, uh, there's no denominators here. However, sine 2 theta cannot equal to 0. So sine 2 theta cannot equal to 0 because you can't divide by 0. And notice we can change this to, to sine theta, cos theta cannot equal to 0. 
which therefore means there are two values that cannot be equal to zero. If sine theta equals zero, non-permissible values, and if cos theta equals zero, non-permissible values. So the two non-permissible equations that we should have is cos theta and sine theta cannot equal to zero. And therefore, okay, um, here it says determine the non-permissible values, so we need a general solution here. I didn't state any uh, specific interval. So for sine theta, okay, so let's just give ourselves a little visual here. Sine theta is equal to zero on those points. So it's every pi, right? So it's zero pi, two pi, three pi, four pi, six pi, or sorry, I guess I skipped one. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, so on. So it's every pi. So all I'm going to write for sine theta is I'm going to say theta cannot equal to um, pi k. So it's any interval of pi, and k is the element of the integers. Okay, cos theta is equal to zero here and here. Okay, so it's again, it's every pi. So pi over 2 plus pi 3 pi over 2 plus pi 5 over 2 and so on and so forth. Don't forget you can also go to the negatives. So the way we're going to so solve that is we're going to say theta cannot equal 2. We're going to get a starting point of pi over 2 and every single pi added or subtracted to that will give you another non-permissible value. So these are all the non-permissible values of this expression right here. It makes it divide by zero. All right, now using identities, simplify this ex expression to one of the three primary trigonometric functions. And what that means, it's sine, cos, or tan, right? That's one of the primary functions. Okay, well, we've already kind of changed the denominator. So we've already said that the denominator can be written as 2 sine theta cos theta, right? And the numerator, well, we get to pick which one. So for the cos 2 theta, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick one and see how it works and if it's better for us. So I'm going to have 1 minus and the cos 2 theta. Cos 2 theta is equal to 2 cos squared minus 1. Okay? So I've just changed this value with the identity on the first page of your notes today. And I've changed this one. Same thing, the one we saw at the beginning. Okay, let me simplify this numerator. So I've got negative 2 cos squared theta. Uh, 1, here 1, minus minus 1, which is plus 2, divided by 2 sine theta, whoops, theta. Erase that, let's make that better. 2 sine theta cos theta. Okay, so notice I can't cancel anything out. Uh, because you have two terms on the numerator, I can't just cancel out that cos. This cos divides both terms. So maybe i got to do a little bit more work. What if I factored out uh, a 2 from the numerator? So notice that there's a common factor of 2. So I'm going to factor a 2. Um, what I'm left with is negative 2 cos squared plus 1 divided by 2 sine theta cos theta. Okay, so now that the 2 is a factor... Notice that I can cancel these 2's out because the 2 is a factor on the numerator, on denominator, 2 times sine times cos, and the 2 is a factor on the numerator, 2 times this bracket here. Okay, well, another thing you can maybe notice, this term right here, this is 1 minus cos squared, right? And if you remember your first trigonometric identities from the Pythagorean ones, we've said that sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cos squared theta. Well, if you look carefully, that's what we have here, 1 minus cos squared. So I can replace this whole expression with sine squared theta. So on the numerator, I now have sine squared theta squared divided by sine theta cos theta. Well, now, because this is a term by itself, right, and this is a term by itself, one term, one term, I can now cancel out the sine on the top and the bottom. So cancel out the square. What we're left with is sine theta over cos theta. And that simplifies to tan theta. So this expression tan theta is equivalent to this expression way up here. So this is a complicated version, really, of writing tan theta uh, with slightly different non-permissible values. For tan, the non-permissible values would just be cos. And for that expression up there, we would have sine and cos on the denominator, cannot equal zero. Okay, guys, good luck with 14b.